identify the type of bond that will occur between S and Y if they react. Give reasons for your answer in question number two. Hello, you are welcome to chemistry class with Flash Isaac. Today, I will be taking you through chemical bonds, the attractive force that holds two species, two atoms, two elements. Remember, we have elements, compounds, and mixtures. Element is a substance which cannot be broken down into simpler form by an ordinary chemical process. They are the fundamental part of matter. Meanwhile, mixture contains two or more elements combined physically. Mixture are physically combined. On the other hand, compounds, they contain two or more elements chemically combined. So, the process of combining two or more elements chemically involves bonding. So, that results to chemical bonds. And the property of chemical or compound, compounds are formed as a result of chemical bonding. So, their properties differ from individual elements that make up the compound. For example, hydrogen and oxygen combine to give you water. The characteristic of water is different from that of hydrogen and oxygen separately. Meanwhile, for mixture, sand and gary, sand retains its own characteristics, gary retains its own characteristics. Intramolecular bonds are bonds within molecules, within, and they account for the chemical properties of compounds or of the uh, materials. Meanwhile, intermolecular bonds, they are bonds between molecules, between, and they are mainly responsible for physical properties. Now, intramolecular bonds, they are divided into ionic bonds or electrovalent bond, covalent bond, and metallic bonds. Meanwhile, intermolecular bonds are hydrogen bonding, London forces, and Van der Waal forces. What is ionic or electrovalent bond? Ionic or electrovalent bond is a bond between two elements whose electronegativity difference is wide. Electronegativity difference. Electronegativity is the property of an atom in the molecule to attract electrons to itself. To attract electrons to itself. For example, if you have this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is K shell, L, so let's say 11. And we have this, one, two. Now, electronegativity increases across the period. Period increases and decreases down the group. In group, it decreases. This is chlorine and this is sodium. There is a large electronegativity difference because chlorine is more electronegative than sodium. Secondly, chlorine has seven electrons in the outermost shell and it needs one to complete. Remember, I told you that the reason for chemical reaction is to achieve stability. This guy is not stable, this guy is not stable. So stability can either be duplex, which is maximum of two electrons in the outermost shell for K shell in this case, or octet, maximum electron of eight in the outermost shell. That is what makes an element stable. So this guy comes to meet sodium. Like I need one electron to be stable. And sodium is like, if not for this one electron, I would have been stable because I have this configuration. So there is that difference. Sodium can easily give out the electron. So there is large electronegativity difference. So they combine to give sodium chloride. Electronegative, electrovalent bond or ionic bond. Covalent bonding involves sharing of electrons. Sharing of electrons. 
Look at something. Um, hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. You see, oxygen needs two to complete its configuration. Now we have, let's say, hydrogen. So this one molecule of hydrogen, another molecule of hydrogen, this is oxygen. Now oxygen comes to meet two hydrogen. Guys, how far? Man, I just need two electrons right now. I need to be complete. I just need two electrons. Hydrogen will be like, I just have one. So I can't even give you what will, what will happen to me. I have just one. This guy said, I have just one. I can't give you. If I even me, I need only one. You, you need two. After deliberation, the they say, okay, let us share the electrons. So this guy comes to stick here. This guy comes to stick here to have pH O pH. So in water, we have covalent bonds. And also in water, we have hydrogen bonding. Why? Anytime hydrogen combines with a more electronegative element in covalent bonding, there is existence of hydro hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bonding, they are intermolecular bonds. They are forces that occur or that appear in whenever hydrogen is bonded with a very electronegative element and in covalent bonding. Now, water and ethanol, they have covalent bonds, but they still have high boiling point. Why? This is as a result of hydrogen bonding that is present. Now look at this. Covalent bond is involved sharing of electron and it occurs between two elements whose electronegativity difference are very close or even zero. For example, electronegativity difference in chlorine to a molecule of chlorine is zero. So this is a covalent bond. Even in hydrogen chloride, HCl, chlorine needs one electron to complete its configuration. Hydrogen needs one. Hydrogen, uh, hydrogen merges with chlorine. Hydrogen enjoys the other one from chlorine. Chlorine enjoys the one from hydrogen. So they share, they are covalently bonded. Even in ammonia, NH3, even in methane, these are covalent bonding, sharing of electrons. Now, covalent bonding can be ordinary covalent bonding or coordinate covalent bonding. All the bonding I've been explaining, the electrons are shared equally. But in coordinate covalent bond, the electrons are not shared equally. One pair donates all the electrons. And how do you know coordinate covalent bond? When you see something like this, you see all those ions, 2 plus, plus, 3 plus, it shows that one pair is the one donating all the electrons. So this guy exists between polar and non-polar uh, molecules. Examples are iodine and naphthalene crystals. So London forces are weak forces. This is a weak force, hydrogen bond. So metallic bonding are actually forces of attraction which hold metal atoms together in crystal lattice. They are responsible for such properties of metals such as malleability, ductility, electrical and thermal conductivity, high melting and boiling point. This equals 11. What is atomic number? Atomic number is the number of proton an element possesses. In other words, is the number of that element. If you are reading through the elements, the first one is hydrogen, which means the atomic number is 1. Hydrogen, helium, atomic number 2. Beryllium, 3. Boron, 4. And so on. And this is the mass of the atom. Mass is simply proton plus neutron. In this case, proton plus neutron is equal to 23. Therefore, neutron is equal to 23 minus 11. For atom Y, atomic number, which is proton, is equal to 16. Mass is equal to 32. Proton plus neutron is equal to 32, which is atomic mass. And neutron will simply be 32 minus 16. What else do we observe? The first question says, identify the groups in the periodic table to which they belong. So, this first one has atomic number of 11. Let's arrange it. First, K share. That we have a maximum electron of 2. So, 1, 
2. Remaining how many? 11 minus 2. That is 9, right? So, this second one can carry 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, 8 plus 2, 10. 11. So, it means there will be another one to carry the remaining one. For this, 16. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. The group to which an element belongs is simply the number of electrons it has in the atabos shape. This is S. It simply belongs to group 1. Group 1. So we can say 2, 8, 1. This has 6 electrons in the outermost shape. So it simply belongs to group 6. Group 6. So 2, 8, 6. We've been able to identify the groups to which they belong. The second question says, identify the type of bond that will occur between S and Y if they react. Look at this. I explained electrovalent bonding and I told you that they are formed between elements who are wide apart in the periodic table and with large electronegativity difference. I also explained that across the period when you go down, electronegativity increases. This is just in group 1. This is in group 6, right? So the Electronegative difference is wide and they are wide apart in the periodic table. What bond will take place? It is simply ionic bonding. Ionic or electrovalent. That is the bond that can take place between them. So, okay, we've already given the reason. So they say give the reasons. That is the reason. Y needs two electrons, but S has just one in the outer boost chair. Therefore, we need two of S to donate electron to one of Y, giving us S to Y. S plus and Y to minus. What happens when they react? This two comes here, this one comes here, plus one, to give you S to Y1, which is the same thing as Y S2. That is the compound that will be formed. Now, let's not pretend that we don't know that this is sodium. Hydrogen, helium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, sodium. So let's not pretend that this is not sodium. And uh, neon, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, for sulfur. Let's not pretend that we don't know that this is sulfur. So, if sodium and sulfur react, this will simply give you A, A, 2s. That is the compound formed. So I hope you found this helpful. If yes, why not subscribe to this channel for more amazing videos and feel free to check out my previous videos. Thank you. Enjoy.